Tired of static cameras that do nothing but glare? Ever dream of building fully functional, destructible security cameras in your Fortnite island? Just like the ones that keep you on your toes in Battle Royale? Well, in this UEFN tutorial episode, we'll show you how to do just that. In this step-by-step -step guide, we'll take your island's security to the next level by unlocking the secrets to creating fully functional, destructible security cameras that act identically to the cameras in Fortnite Battle Royale, all without writing a single line of verse script. To begin, let's add a security camera prop to a wall or area in our scene. The security camera prop can be found by searching the Fortnite Props folder. Next, let's add a cinematic sequence device to our scene, which we'll use to create and control the animation of our camera. For those unaware, the cinematic sequence device provides a way to add cinematic sequences to levels, allowing you to add custom keyframe animation on a non-linear timeline. Next, we'll need to create a level sequence for our camera animation. To do this, right-click in the content browser, then under Cinematics, select Level Sequence. After naming the file, double-click the Level Sequence to open Sequencer. With the Sequencer open, click the plus track, then navigate to Actor to Sequence. This should bring up a list of all the actors in your scene that can be added to the Level Sequence. However, if we first select the asset or assets we want to add to our sequence, then click the plus track and actor to sequence. The assets we have selected are now above the search bar at the top of our list. With our camera prop added, if we click the plus icon next to the device name, we have a list of properties we can add to the sequencer. Since we want our camera to rotate back and forth, we'll need to add the transform track to our sequencer. However, if we try to adjust or animate our camera's rotation transform, we can see that both the base and the camera move or rotate. If we select our prop, we can see that the camera prop consists of the camera base and the camera itself. So in order to only move the camera, we'll need to add the camera asset to our sequencer before adding the transform track. To do this, click the plus icon next to the device name. Then under components, select camera, which is the name of the camera component with the prop. Next, click the plus button for the camera track, then add the transform track. With the transform track added, let's begin creating the animation for our camera by keyframing the starting, middle, and ending positions. To do that, select the camera or transform track. Then in the viewport, rotate the camera to your starting position. Once you are happy with the position, click the Add Keyframe button. Alternatively, with your track selected, you can use the hotkey Enter to add a keyframe. Since we want our camera to both start and end at the same position, we'll also need to add a keyframe at the end point of our animation. For this example, we want our camera to rotate relatively slowly to give the player enough time to destroy or avoid the camera before it can detect them. So we'll set our end frame at 20 seconds. Let's next add our middle position at 10 seconds, which will be the camera pointing the opposite direction. At this point, we can cycle through our animations and add any keyframes to correct the position or rotation of our camera. With our camera animation sequence complete, we'll need to next add it to our cinematic sequence device. To do that, select the cinematic sequence device in the outline R or the viewport. Click on the blank field in the sequence option and select the level sequence we just created. To make the sequence begin at the start of the level, be sure the autoplay is checked. If we were to test our sequence now, you'll notice our camera will only rotate once, then stop. In order to have our camera animation continue to play until the camera is destroyed or disabled, we'll need to also check the loop playback setting. At this point, we have a fully animated security camera. However, in order for it to act like the security cameras in Fortnite Battle Royale, we'll need to add some additional devices and functionality. Let's start by adding the ability for the camera to detect the player when it looks towards that direction and isn't blocked by a wall or object. To do this, add a perception trigger device, which can be found in the Fortnite Devices folder. Place the device directly in front of the camera lens and scale it to 0.33, the smallest the device can go. For those unfamiliar with this device, the perception trigger uses line of sight between the device and players, which can then trigger other devices. With our perception trigger now in our scene, let's next add it to our level sequence.
We'll then need to set keyframes to match the position and rotation of the camera. If we were to now test our camera functionality, we can see not only does our camera move, but it can now also detect players. However, our perception device is able to detect the player despite the camera's position or rotation. The reason for this is our perception trigger has a very wide field of view and isn't limited to the angle of the camera. In order to fix this, we'll need to add an object on the sides of our camera that will block the perception device's line of sight and limit its angle to the angle the camera is facing. With that in mind, let's duplicate one of our grid planes. Then scale it to fit on the side of our camera. For this, we'll also want to ensure our blocking object protrudes past the edge of the camera. Next, we'll need to add our perception blocker to our level sequence so that their movement matches that of the camera and the perception device. We can see at this point, the camera is only able to detect us when it rotates towards a player and the player is within its field of view. In order to hide our perception blockers from the player, create a new material. Within the material editor, set the blend mode to transparent then set the opacity to zero. Once that's complete, apply the new material to the perception blockers by dragging and dropping it onto the asset. Alternatively, within the details panel, you can enable actor hidden in game for each of the perception blockers. At this point, despite being detected by the camera, the camera still continues to rotate which eventually forces it to break line of sight with the player. In order to stop this from happening, we can use functions of our perception trigger in conjunction with the cinematic sequencer. To do this, select the cinematic sequencer. In the detail panel, under functions, add an element to the play function and to the pause function. Using the new pause function element, use the eyedropper to select the perception trigger. In the drop down select, on device sees a player. Next, select the play function element and again use the eyedropper to select the perception trigger. In the drop down select, on device loses sight of a player. If we test now, we can see that our camera now stops when a player is detected and will only restart once the player is outside the view of the camera. At this point, we have a fully functioning security camera. Next, we need to create a way for players to disable or destroy it. To do this, first let's add a prop manipulator device to our camera. Since the camera now consists of our perception blocker objects and the perception trigger, we'll need to use the prop manipulator volume to affect multiple objects. So enable the effect call objects in a zone setting. But ensure the zone isn't touching the wall or other objects surrounding the camera. With our zone created, Enable the Modify Prop Health setting and set the Prop Health to 1. This will ensure that the camera is disabled from a single shot from any gun. In order to give players a wider hitbox, select the camera and within the Details setting, select and check the No Collision checkbox. Additionally, select the Perspective Blocker objects and in the Details settings, under Collision, select Ignore Only Pawn from the drop-down. Next, let's add and scale a prop that will represent the camera head box. For our example, we're using a box prop. We want to make sure our hit box prop is within the prop manipulator and is slightly wider and taller than our camera. 
Since our perception trigger is a device not a prop, we can't hide or destroy it at runtime. So in order to show the player this camera is disabled, let's instead use a level sequence to show our camera is no longer functional. For this, since all of our tracks are already in place, let's duplicate our camera's original level sequence. Open up the newly created sequence and remove all the keyframes aside from the ones at frame zero. Move the animation range slider to one second, then keyframe the camera and perception triggers facing down as if the camera has lost power. Before we leave the sequencer, select the transform tracks. Right click and within the pop-up menu, navigate to the edit section drop-down. Within the menu, select the when finished drop-down, then select keep state. This will ensure that once the animation is complete, the camera remains in the position of the last frame. With that complete, let's now duplicate our cinematic sequence device in our scene and place our new level sequence in the duplicate. We also need to uncheck autoplay and loop playback, as well as remove the pause functions. For the play function, we want to select the eyedropper and use it to select the prop manipulator device. Within the dropdown we want to select, on destroyed. Next, select the perception trigger. Within the function setting, add an element to disable. Select the eyedropper and use it to select the prop manipulator device. Within the dropdown we want to select, on destroyed. Additionally, within our original cinematic sequence device, add a functional element to stop. With the eyedropper, select the prop manipulator, and in the drop-down select on destroyed. We also need to ensure the camera prop doesn't get destroyed when the hitbox is hit. To do this, select the camera prop, and within the details panel, disable allow team damage, and can be damaged. Lastly, let's add a visual effect that shows the player the camera has been disabled. To do this, add a VFX spawner directly above or in front of the camera. The VFX spawner can be found in the Fortnite device folder. We'll go in further detail on all the settings and ways you can use the VFX spawner in a later video. However, with the VFX spawner selected, within the details panel, select Custom Visual Effects Override. From the Custom Visual Effects dropdown, select the Impact Default Particle System. Then rotate the VFX spawner to where the arrows are pointing upwards and slightly towards the player. Next, change the Enable on Face settings to None. Lastly, add a function to the Enable function. Then use the eyedropper to select the prop manipulator device. And within the drop-down select On Destroyed. And there you have it, your very own destructible, rotating security cameras ready to bring next level surveillance to your Fortnite island. Now it's time to experiment, customize, and let your creative eye run wild. Don't forget to share your awesome islands and camera setups in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more UEFN magic. Let's turn Fortnite islands into interactive masterpieces, one stunning project at a time. But whatever you do, always remember, don't just play, create.